Hi, my name is Hadil, and today I'm reading to you the name jar by Yangust Choi. Look how pretty this red stamp is. Through the school bus window, Onhei looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Unhei's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red Satan pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name, Unhei had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block, block with her name craved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and bridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Onhei, surprising her. Onhei looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Onhei answered quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Unhei, said Unhei. Unhei, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, Unhei, some kids chanted. No, no, Unhei corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Unhei. Oh. It's you, hey, the boy said, like you, hey. How about, hey, you? Just then, the, bu the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Unhei hurled to get off. You, hey, bye-bye, the kids yelled as she, left, as she left. Unhei felt herself blush. Unhei stood in the doorway of her new and nosy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? asked the curly-haired boy with lots of dots in his face. You're the new girl, right? he asked cheerfully. Onhei nodded, and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Cactus, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Cactus thanked him and greeted Unhei. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Unhei smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Unhei pictured the kids on the bus. Mm, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Cactus showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Onhei kept thinking about her name. How was school, Onhei? Her mother asked. When she walked in, did you understand the teacher? Unhei simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you are a good Korean. I will, replied Unhei, but, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Onhei is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Onhei complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Onhei, her mother said. That's a good thing. Onhei just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Onhei and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fuddle's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. 
The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed. Unhei's favorite for soup, it made Unhei smile. Just because we moved to America, her mother said, does not mean we stop eating Korean food. At the Shika counter, a friendly man smiled at Unhei. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Unhei nodded. I am Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Unhei, she said. And ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Unhei nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it. She told him, a graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim, Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Unhei. That evening, Unhei stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm. Maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hey, my name is Shuji, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when Onhei arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Unhei took one out and read it aloud, Daisy. That's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Sandy, who sat next to her. Unhei took out the rest of the paper. Tamila, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Unhei nodded and unfolded another, unfolded another paper, or another piece of paper. <laughs> Wednesday, yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over, over on his face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all and you'll have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Onhei looked out the window and so it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Unhei turned, turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Zoe, he said. And you, don't you have any name? Unhei thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Wanna try it? She offered the stamp to Joey. And he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Onhei said, and then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day, the jar got fuller, with more names, and Onhei read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, Avery, these sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I put in three more, said Ralph, Madison, Bark, and Lix. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born. Did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When Onhei got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, to my Onhei, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here, the moon is up, but there, 
the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you will always be my Unhei, your grandma, forever. Unhei took out her wooden stem and filled the paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Unhei walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hey, Unhei. Hello, Mr. Kim, Unhei replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Unhei? He asked her with his eyes opened wide. Unhei looked quickly at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Unhei, and it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yunhei, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It meant Unhei smiled. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Unhei, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Unhei came to class early to look at the names one last time, but the jar was not on her desk. Instead, there was a single piece of paper, a paper with a name on it. Unhei slipped it in her pocket. What's, where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as, she, as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Unhei said. It wasn't on Mr. Cactus', Cactus desk or on any other desk. And it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As the other kids arrived, the help looks Look, soon, Mr. Cactus came in, and Ralph shouted at him, The name jar is gone! The jar with all the names in it! Gone? Mr. Cactus replied with a look of concern. He asked Unhei, Did you get a chance to read all the names? Unhei nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Unhei wrote her name in both English and Korean on the, on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought off for me, she told the class, but I realized that I like my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Unhei means grace. 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 Unhei, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Yunhei. Unhei. Unha. Unhei said her name again, slowly and clearly. Soon, the kids began to say it better, even Mr. Cocktails. They uploaded Unhei's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Unhei. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Cocktails reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Unhei heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye, Unhei. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Unhei. Unhei said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Unhei, Unhei, come downstairs. Mother called up to Unhei. Your friend is here. Unhei rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his, in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? asked Unhei breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Mm. Well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name, and you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? He asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Unhei said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her bucket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Unhei. I've already got a good Korean uh, nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver filled pouch from his bucket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters scraped sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chinku, said Onhei. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back.
Okay, that was it. That's our story. Thank you so much for listening. What kind of name would you pick for yourself if you could? Bye.